Good. good evening. Welcome to tonight's Village of Elso Committee meeting. Today is September 11th, 2017. We'll call this meeting in order at 7.30. Can you, uh, clerk, can you call the roll, please? Yes. Uh, Trustee McGrill? Here. Trustee Delzell? Here. Trustee Pierce? Here. Trustee Zielinski? Here. Trustee Juarez? Here. Trustee McLaughlin? Here. Mayor Kitching. I'm sorry, Mayor Ryan. Oh, oh, oh very, very oh. sorry. No problem. Please accept my sincere apologies. I can't even reach you. Look at you. <laughs> we have Here. a quorum. Yes. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, sure you are. Yes, I am. <laughs> you know, I'd like to start off this evening with a statement. Uh, I thought this was very good. Um, past presidents have recognized September 11th is obviously a, just a terrible day in our history. And I came across um, a statement made. This was approved by a joint resolution on December 18th, 2001. Uh, that Congress has designated September 11th of each year as Patriot Day, uh, which reads as the following. September 11, 2001 was etched into America's memory when 19 terrorists ter attacked us with barbarity unequaled in our history. On Patriot Day, we cherish the memory of thousands of innocent victims lost, extend our thoughts and prayers to their families, and in honor of the heroic men and women who risked and sacrificed their lives so others might survive. Since 9-11, we have recognized the threat posed by terrorists to the safety of the American people and work to protect our homeland by fighting terrorists abroad. We are confronting terrorism by advancing freedom, liberty, and prosperity as alternative to the ideal ideologies of hatred and repression. Our nation pays tribute to our courageous men and women in uniform serving around the world and devoted members of our law enforcement, public safety, and intelligence communities at home who work night and day to protect us from harm and preserve the freedom of this great nation. Ordinary citizens rose to the challenge, united in prayer, and responded with extraordinary acts of courage with some giving their lives for the country they loved. On Patriot Day, we remembered all of those who were taken from us in an instant and seek their lasting memorial in a safer and more helpful world. We must not allow our resolve to be weakened by the passage of time. We will meet the test that history has given us and continue to fight to rid the world of terrorism and promote liberty around the globe. I feel this is obviously not just a statement, but this is really important to certainly the folks that lost, all the um, men and women that lost their lives, and even more importantly is all the families that this affected too. I mean, everything has residual effects on there uh, with actions such as these. Uh, can we just take a moment of silence just to remember everybody that, that lost their lives and those families? I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, obviously, today we um, remembered them as well at both the um, Veterans Memorial here and at the Village Hall, too. We did our flags at half mass today. And again, um, our prayers go out to all the families that are affected by September. And obviously, it goes around the world. It's not just those, but everyone is affected by the terrorism. And we do our best to combat that every single day. Moving on uh, with the officer's report, starting with myself. As a reminder, this coming weekend, uh, Saturday, September 16th, from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m., myself, the police department and fire department are participating in Walgreens uh, Health Fair. And uh, please join us if you're available for that event. should be good. Uh, we're going to have presentations, screenings, and assessments of blood pressures, blood uh, glucose, cholesterol checks, and so forth, uh, medical advice. They'll have doctors available discuss even diets, demonstrations, rethink what you drink, uh, activities, 
So again, this looks like a great event. So if you're available, please join us out there September 16th. Also got a notice today from our economic development group that uh, at Navy Pier uh, from sep on September 27th and 28th will be the ICSC Chicago Deal Making Conference. Uh, this is available at no cost to new mayors. Chris, is that the way I wrote? Thank you. So I, I do plan to attend that with the author then too. Pardon me? Thank you very much. Uh, we'll take care of that. Also, uh, please keep us in mind the whole village is participating in the annual uh, Village of Elsip community-wide garage sale. This is going to be September 15th, 16th, and 17th from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. Uh, Erica, was there one more day to register if you want to put your name on the list, or is that done now? No, tomorrow is the deadline, and right now we're at 107 uh, people that are registered. Oh, that's great. So we've got 107 people registered where you can identify with garage sales taking place, but feel free. No permit needed for this, and please give me an opportunity to get rid of things at your home. Next thing on my list, I was handed this right before the meeting this evening uh, by the building commissioner. Uh, I'd like to ask the board for consensus for the Sprinkler Fitters Union to have a band at their open house this coming Saturday, September 16, 2017. The hours of this event will be from 1 p.m. till 7 p.m. Um, Roger said he spoke with police and fire. Jay, were you okay with this too? Did you know about this? Okay, so board, can I get a consensus? Everybody okay with that? Good with that. I'm fine. Yeah? Okay, thanks. So, Roger, we do have an okay for that then, all right? Also, I just wanted to bring everyone's attention. Something I put in your mailboxes this afternoon was the, um, there was a question last uh, last week at the meeting uh, we haven't done anything with this yet. I had asked for a consensus for a rezoning to start matters off with, not to mention there's going to be um, a liquor license application request coming as well for the Justified Motorcycle uh, Group Club, and they're looking to occupy a property at 12221 South Cicero. I did go out with uh, Roger Early last week, and we did pinwheel the properties, which is what you see in your packets, that building to building of where this uh, clubhouse is, is approximately 345 feet from the church building to the actual structure itself, where the uh, that's going to need the rezoning. So please consider that. And the last piece I put in the packet, too, is we want to identify the same type of zoning that was made for a similar organization at 123rd and Keeler. So please keep that in mind. If you have anyone has any questions, or if you have questions this evening, I'm happy to answer them. But um, I wanted to at least, uh, obviously, we um, the, the board asked for a, a uh, double check on, this, on the sizing, which is what we did before we move forward with this then, too. So any, any questions on this? My only concern was the distance to the church and this Cures my concerns. I'm mean, no concern. What's that? I What's said my only concern was the distance to the church and sure. that justified. It, okay. This fixes that. Okay. And that's fine. So we haven't done anything with They did submit a $1,000 uh, liquor license application fee. We haven't done anything with, with that yet because we certainly wanted to double check on the, on the compliance issue with distance first. So we'll, uh, I'll talk back with this organization uh, tomorrow and we'll follow through on that as long as we met the, the distance qualification. And um, certainly I'm speaking with our attorney. That's one of their specialties, our zoning, to see what's going to have to take place to zone this from B1 to B3. Next, uh, on everyone's agenda this evening, I had the appointment of Jim Smith as a part-time plumbing inspector. And I did redact some personal information, but I shared with everyone out here was uh, Jim's application for employment. And he looks to be more than qualified. And uh, I do have his business card. I did meet with this gentleman, great guy. And he was like president of uh, C.J. Erickson Plumbing up until recently when he retired. And um, the big thing I wanted to make sure the board knew, which I was unaware of during the, the previous administration, we had a part-time plumbing inspector, I'm sorry, plumbing inspector that was working after hours. This gentleman is available during the day which is really important to contractors and homeowners too because we certainly don't want like a note being transferred from party to party and maybe being misunderstood. So this gentleman is available during the day. 
and I told him the frequency may not be as much as a regular building inspector, and he did he's, he was fine with that as well as he said he does have enough knowledge to fill in for a building inspector if necessary if there was a shortage. So, Roger, um, he had come to you and. I think it's a great referral. I think he'd be a great asset to the village end too. So it's Jim Smith. He's an ELSA president yet too. So, no. Palos Park. I stand corrected. Park. Right. It says he was with, Park. And C.J. Erickson was in was an ELSA. That's why I'm looking at the application here. No, he's from Palos Park. So yeah, a great great addition to our our staff. So Mayor, I, did anybody else apply, or we just have the one? You know what? No one else did apply, and um, I don't know that it was posted. No, I, I don't know. No, it was not posted. Okay. You know, th this was somebody that uh, was referred to our building commissioner, and um, based on th we're, this isn't a full-time position. He's, he's only paid per inspection and and plan review. It is, it is an appointed position. It is With an the appointed advice and consent of the board. Correct. Right. It is an appointed position, and um, we. This is. Uh, is it, this is a 1099 position too, I believe, right? Or is, are we doing the taxes and everything else out of these right now? Okay, because I just saw what was submitted for payroll. Like exactly, they get $18 per inspection and 1050. 1050 for plan review. Yes. So this will all go into building. Yes. And there's nobody in town that would be considered somebody that lives in town. Roger, um, approximately, you know, I think I think we were looking at this. How much plumbing inspection did we do last season, and what was that valued at to, to demonstrate to the, the board and the public what what that is? It's not a whole lot of money. I, off the top of my head, I don't remember, but it's it's well under ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I was gonna say I think it was only like fifty five hundred dollars all year, something like that. So I mean, to compete for that, so and to go is out, is it an hourly thing that no. he gets paid? Plan review. Okay. Separates. Which is what what makes it difficult to go out uh, to ask uh, to post jobs like this because this is only as needed, that kind of thing. You know, even even our part time building inspectors may be doing two a day, and that's only when we need them yet too. So it's not that much of a you know. Sometimes in the summer you get more frequency than you do in the winter, but I'd hate to. Um, overplay this position, especially when it's an appointed position, then too. I've never met the gentleman before, but he seemed like he seemed like a very good pick. Yeah, too. So I'll ask for an approval for that at the next meeting. Also, I had on tonight's agenda was the appointment of the Honorable Arthur J. Genera Jr. Uh, he's a retired judge as the Village of Elsa Paseba hearing officer. We've never had a placebo hearing officer in the past. This is a new structured form. Like, um, trustee does all you can probably help me with this. We used to have a committee, right? Wasn't it, was it part of the pension committee, or who was deciding that before? Uh, the pension decided, and uh, that's where it usually stayed. Then we had uh, difficulty with a duty-related pension for a police officer. That's where the previous board amended the ordinance to allow for the uh, PESBA hearing. And then this should sort out matters so it doesn't have to work its way through the circuit court. Sure. And again, this is someone who's um, uh, delivers basically an unbiased opinion as to whether or not someone with a catastrophic, catastrophic injury is entitled to um, health insurance. Health insurance, right? As be, being um, as a disabled, uh, like a disabled health insurance benefit. Right. Mayor, at how and at what rate is this position compensated? This is at, uh, I, I included that in the, well, that was actually in the email, but it was, this is um, $290 an hour is what the, is what he requested. With no retainer, this is as needed? Exactly, because these, I don't know how often these cases will come up, but this is just as needed. Right? Okay. 
You know, um, just a little history on that, because I didn't really understand it um, too well myself in the past. But we never did have a hearing officer, like you said. And um, the previous board did put this ordinance into place um, in December of 2014, but they never hired a hearing officer. Um, and I do have concerns with one person just hearing um, a case, because I've been familiar with other cases in the past where if one person is just deciding, you know, something, these are usually catastrophic injuries, and um, it's, it's a lot on the village, it's a lot on the employee, because um, it's like long-term payments, right, if they're found well, it's, to it's, be injured. Go, go ahead, Kent, yes. Um, this is a, a policy, I, I, this predates me, this policy, but it's a very good uh, practice to have a policy like this. It's also good to have a placebo hearing officer who has experience doing this available because um, you need to have a fairly quick turnaround. Mm -hmm. um, the rate seems high compared to any other attorney rates we do, but this is a very specialized field. It's not as many, you know, this isn't a continuing thing. It's on an as-needed basis. Um, I looked at this guy's resume. I've never met the guy before, but I looked at it and it was very impressive considering there aren't that many hearings. Um, he's done a number before. He's also been an attorney um, mm -hmm. before in those, in some of other cases. Um, there is, to your uh, point, there actually is an appeal process within your own ordinance. So this uh, would be a, a process that would be similar to a court. Um, the uh, applicant would be bringing, in theory, their attorney. Uh, the village could be bringing in an attorney. Um, it could be argued before an independent judge. But there's an appeal process actually back to the board. Um, so uh, if you don't like the opinion, you have the ability to change the opinion. But this provides for a process. And I think it's really important um, because of the dollar amounts, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. The dollar amounts in here can be huge. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be very easily be a million dollar uh, to the village, cost a million dollars per case if you look at the present value of it. So it's really important that we not only have a very good process, but that we have the process in place and, and so we're not having to do that should an applicant um, come forward. So uh, there, is a, there is an appeal process, you're right, a single judge making a single decision without any appeal could, could leave us in a, a situation uh, you, when you pass that ordinance, put uh, a process in place that, that has another level so it can be appealed. And I just wonder, we had put it in place, but we never used it. And I know that Trustee Ryan at the time, myself and Trustee Dalzell voted no for it. Um, and um, the mayor was a tiebreaker on that one, and then we never used it. I don't think we had the need for it. And we have had a case come up. Um, I think the attorneys for the village and the, the employee's attorney settled it, right. from what well, I understand. Well, the, the, the need for it isn't based on whether or not the village has a need for it. The need for it is based upon whether or not there's an applicant into that process. They're applying to have a reduced uh, rate, essentially zero for health care for them and their spouse for life. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that there's a procedure involved but it's also important that we understand who all the players are so if there, an applicant comes um, due, we can schedule that fairly quickly. Um, so uh, it is, um, I, I attend uh, uh, meetings both at the IML or treasurer meetings. Um, we are definitely in the right place to have such an ordinance on the book because these are such large dollar amounts. If you don't have that process, um, it essentially will follow what the duty disability uh, decision of the pension boards are, which means you're abdicating your uh, responsibility from the municipal side to whatever the pension boards decide. Um, and there are additional requirements not that can be imposed by the municipality, which has been done in this case. And again, because it's such a large potential dollar amount, it, it, as I said, you have somebody in their 20s doing this and them and their spouse for life, you can be looking at very easily a million dollars in present value. It's really important to have this not only in place, which it already is, 
but to have a hearing officer with experience. This isn't just let's grab any attorney. We need somebody who has experience in this as much as, much experience as you can find. Trustees, I'm going to send you almost 30 pages of cases, too. I mean, this would be a lot of paper, paper to print out, but I'll do it online. I'll send you uh, a, a, about 30 different pages of cases that this particular judge has handled yet, too, and did a great job on, too. I'm not opinion. concerned about it. I, his <coughs> credentials are there. Impressive. That's not the concern. Mayor, if I could ask you, well, I'm just curious why you you've didn't like, like it before, but you like it now. Because it was approved by a board. There is an ordinance for him, and we have a pending... Uh, applicant that w needs to have service on this. You do have a pending applicant. Yes. Okay. So I need to fill this position okay. Potential. to accommodate uh, that. Pot Potential application. Right. Pending application. Right. And his resume is very impressive, but. Potential about it. He hasn't uh, filled out the. It's, it, we're uh, waiting for it to come back. But it's there, yes. It's there. We, we believe that one's coming. But it, it's not, the full paperwork is not been. So, Trustee McGraw, what would your, what would your scenario entail if. You know, versus the one judge, you said two? What, what is no, that? I, the one applicant or the one appointment, I mean, did we look at other people? His is very impressive, but, our, I mean, there's other people out there, too. How do we choose him? This is, again, this is an appointed position that had to be a qualified position. And yes. I, think, I think once the trustees see the amount of experience that he has, aside from, mm -hmm. his, uh, aside from his resume, I think you'll agree with me. There, there haven't been that many uh, cases out there, frankly, that have been decided this way. Uh, there, there was a case um, in Hoffman Estates just a few years ago that definitively decided that you can't have this process and it, is, it, it can be done this way. It hadn't been all that clear before that. So this is a fairly recent development. So there's not that many players who have experience because there haven't been that many Paseba cases coming before a Paseba hearing officer. So this is one of the few people who have the experience. Again, I've, n I've never met the gentleman, um, but uh, we're lucky to find somebody who's willing to say yes, who has had experience at, at a few of these. Who negotiated how, how the rate? Where did we, how did we come up with the rate? I don't rate? think it was negotiated. I think this is what this guy's rate is. Yes. And again, this isn't, it, one of these hearings could have a lot of hours mm -hmm. because um, a duty disability case, many times, I mean, we're looking at the old, uh, the old phone books for the city of Chicago style uh, size. Uh, so they can be many hours, but they're one-offs. Um, and these are, aren't going to have, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, people aren't going to get injured um, and you're not going to be getting many of these cases, these are sort of one-time deals. So in the grand scheme of things, the difference between a 290 or a 220 or a 180, you'd rather be at the 180, but again... Um, it's all money. It's all it money, Ken. And it is. As and the I, mayor is, the as the the mayor has pointed out every meeting, we are on an unbalanced budget right now, I, so every dollar it. matters. I got it, but when I'm looking at it, I'm looking at that difference versus potentially a million dollars for someone who's learning and doesn't know what they're doing, I'd rather get the person with experience okay. in this particular case. How, how did we find this person? Um, I, frankly, was pressuring um, the attorney for quite a while because I knew there was a, a potential case coming along and I, I found out we didn't have one. I'd been, I pressured the attorney for quite a while um, and uh, our village attorney, I think, it has been involved in one case um, and uh, he would be representing the village's side, so he wouldn't be a hearing officer. Um, so I think he went to the person who would, uh, he, he knew from that case. Um, and it's not, there's no financial thing back and forth between this, uh, the uh, village attorney and this. It's just, be, there's been so few cases he knew about them from another case. It's a referral. It's a referral. There's no financial interaction between them. They've had very little contact, frankly, outside of that case, to my knowledge. You keep saying there's a potential for this million dollar... Uh, up to. Up to. Have we had any of these? Yes, well, we have. We have, uh, we have them on the books I right now. I believe we have for? one placebo, but we have quite a few um, others along. We've, we've got a lot of duty disability cases, um, and one that's gone all the way through to placebo, which I believe is how we ended up um, at the uh, and it predates me. It's the three of you who are here, but I believe that's how we ended up 
uh, probably going down the road of having this ordinance. We actually have a formal placebo application these days, too, which was oh yeah, we never before. had that before. So this isn't just a this isn't just a the last part of this. This is also part of the process to say what is the process. Yes, there's an ordinance in place, but how do you apply? Um, so we put together a, a, a placebo application has been worked on just in the last um, couple of months. Yeah. Yes. Any questions? Yeah, I wasn't here before, and I wasn't quite sure how this all worked. So uh, how did we go through it before without a hearing officer? We was, didn't have the they, process. It was, it was done by the pension boards. The pension, the pension boards decided the village lived with. So we just followed their decision no matter what. Correct. Right. And in a recent go around on the police side, uh, the village filed a motion to intervene and that went through the courts and uh, probably cost pension board and the police, uh, the, the village, quite a bit of money. And one more question, uh, Mike Pierce brought up, uh, we're a little behind on the budget as well. Um, where would this 290 an hour go? come from I mean which whose budget would that be attacking um, I believe that would come out of uh, 1000 which is administration that, that's the department you usually do sort of one-offs and it would come from the uh, legal bills and that if we did end up with a very large case that took a lot of hours you we may be hearing about it at, uh, at a budget amendment because these are you they're hard to predict um, in general now we believe that there is one coming um, but in general, they're hard to predict at, at a budget time. So if it ended up being a, a beyond uh, where the budget was, we'd, it'd be something you'd know about, and we'd be bringing that back to the board. Kind of like if a snowstorm ends up really larger than what was predicted, you explain it, and you come before the board. So how we got this resume was you pressured the lawyer to find someone, so the lawyer found him, and we got this resume. Correct. Sure. And his resume, frankly, was pretty impressive. So I, I was hoping we'd find anybody with experience, and that's not what we found. We found someone with a, uh, quite a bit of experience, given how can't we can't we post it, or is this something that we don't post? Or you could post it. You're it's, not going to find it. These are professional post. services. These are yeah. you, you can't put it out as an RFP, um, but you could put it out as an RFQ. I don't know how many. Again, there's not that many out there, and I don't doubt anyone would even notice it. And, and the challenge, the his RFQ uh, request for qualifications wouldn't be worth it, seriously. Now, so with, now with an application like that, resume like this. You have a situation that's like right in front of your face right now. I, I'm just struggling to understand why you didn't have it already if you had, you know, or, or you did have it, but why you didn't have somebody in place if it wasn't we, costing we you. Why didn't we need it before, but we need it now? Because, well, we did. You because did. of the you application that... But they just didn't have anybody in place, which doesn't make I mean. sense to me That's if it was an ads-needed basis. Why didn't you have no, somebody... We, we, correct me if I'm wrong. We, we never had a case for a placebo officer prior. We, we did. You have not had one since your Since ordinance. we approved the ordinance. That's what I'm saying. So, yes, when... Yes, when that ordinance was passed, mm -hmm. would it have made sense to say, okay, let's get somebody so when we're ready? Yeah. Probably, but that's not where we ended up. Right. So we have, a, we have a potential applicant. We believe there's an application coming. It's time to make sure the application process um, was formalized, which it has been. Um, and now it's time to do the last part, which is to uh, make sure that our attorney is capable of doing it, which is um, and that we have a hearing officer. It just seems reactive. I mean, I'm not saying that the $295 is a lot. I don't. I don't know. Um, but you only have one data point. It just seems re reactive versus proactive. I just we we just want to have somebody in place yeah, for sure. We're anticipating. Uh, this I think application. I think you need the person in place. Yeah. Okay. But he doesn't get paid until unless there's work. One right. of these come up. Right. And one of these has not come up in the last three years. Oh, that's correct. You know what? When was, it was three years ago. Was the December last one? 14. December first of fourteen. Okay, so yeah, it's been. Fortunately, it's been three years since one of these has come along. Hopefully, you're looking at every ten or twenty. Right, years. right. But uh, he's our injury things have improved greatly with the accident review board. That is correct. And training. That is correct. And education. These are these are um, these are public safety in the line of duty. 
duty disability cases. So they have to go through the pension board first. Okay. So I'll have it on the agenda next week for approval on that so we have someone in place pending the upcoming application that we've got. All right. That's all I have. Next, Clerk Petzl, your report. Thank you. I have the presentation of the minutes for the July 10th board meeting. I did go through these, and I've got some notes as far as corrections are concerned. If anybody else has anything, please get them to Violet ASAP. I have the presentation of the minutes for the July 5th committee of the whole meeting. I have to go through those yet again, getting any corrections to Violet as soon as possible. The presentation of the August Freedom of Information report, we had received a total of 28 requests during the month of August. It's been a busy month. Next, in regards to the meeting agendas, et cetera, I just kind of wanted to bring full circle. I wanted to remind everybody on the board that as you're submitting items to be included in the agenda, if you would please copy me. I have asked Violet to send me the draft agenda so that I can review it, and I'm trying to cross-reference things. Likewise, as you're reviewing the draft and adding or changing or deleting, copy me on those emails as well. There was a question about something that was on the draft agenda, and when the final agenda came out on Friday, it was missing, and I was kind of going back and forth with Violet saying, wasn't there this on there? Who replied? Who took it off? So I just want to make sure that I'm included so that I can be that double check. She has sent out an email requesting that anything be sent to her by Wednesday of this week as she is off on Friday, if at all possible. And then my direction to her is also that we were going to request that any changes be given to her by 3 p.m., the day the agenda is going to be posted, as well as the packet, so that I can review, make sure everything is incorporated, and then she will be posting it right at the end of that business day. So please try to be concise with your communication. I just wanted to bring everybody up to speed with the search for the full-time deputy collector position. We did have two internal applicants. I am reviewing those applications against the job descriptions that were posted, and then we'll make time to interview both applicants and then make a decision from there. However, I did want to bring the office supervisor slash deputy clerk position back up in front of the board for some discussion today so that I can get a consensus from you on which way to go. Back a few months ago, we had talked about a deputy clerk position that was prior to the person who was fulfilling most of the duties taking another position and resigning from the village. We then had discussion in closed session about an office supervisor position, and a job description was put together for that, and then the board decided that that needed to have some additional discussion or direction. We are getting to the point where we need to get this person in place. I do not have a preference whether it is a deputy clerk, which would be the supervisor for the clerk's office, or the office supervisor to oversee the staff in the water and the building department. However, I need to get somebody in that position to take care of the agendas and the minutes and the board packets and the FOIAs and making sure that we are in compliance across the board with all of our documentation. So this is me asking for the board's recommendation of which way to proceed to finalize a job description for a deputy clerk for review for posting or to finalize a job description for an office supervisor to bring to the board for review and posting because we need to get this moving. So I am all ears. I prefer the office supervisor position so that that way they can be across the multiple departments and keep tabs across the board. 
believe that we had a discussion with the two superintendents from the water and from public works and they were both in an agreement of a office supervisor uh, would be beneficial building bill M I apologize and uh, with regards to trustee Pierce when talked about the the headcount um, it's not replacing in whole we had a supervisor in charge of clerk's office we had a supervisor in charge of the building and uh, water area and uh, those are two positions that are now vacant so if we were to hire a office supervisor to take over both of those areas uh, as a combined uh, office then we'd be saving one on the headcount and then in addition to the one vacancy that's there at present so I'd be in favor of hiring the replacement for that one that uh, had recently left and then combining both the offices with a combined office supervisor. We'd still be saving some money. Uh, I believe it would be getting a little bit more efficiencies out of that as well. And I think that would bode well for getting some more cross-training so that when we're having people out on vacation or sick that they're at the position, the duties are more easily transferred to another desk for lack of a better way of putting it. Trustee Pierce? I'm going, <laughs> I'm, the only it, one that Trustee Glover yeah. spoke up and I'm just going around the horn. No, but <laughs> nothing in particular. I, I don't really have a preference. I mean, I'll go with the majority on it. I mean, if the majority is office supervisor, then. Okay. Which Trust would make it easier for the, for the, for the office? At this point in time, anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a preference either. Okay. Wrong answer. <laughs> Just, uh, I'll go with the majority. And you talk to the, I'll go with the majority. Heads, like, mm -hmm. So it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you show that there's a definite need for a supervisor in your offices. So one person that oversees both sides. Correct. Yeah. Correct. That person and the cross training. I'm in favor of that. Cross training, and then that person would also be the one that is responsible for the FOIAs, mm -hmm. the agendas, the meeting packets, transcribing the minutes. So that'll be four full. Do we know the workers? duties that you need on that other side. Is that like defined? Like yours is very defined. Mm -hmm. I believe there were uh, notations in the job description. I, I can't. You do I have them in there. Okay. I can. Okay. I will route that again for okay. review prior to the board meeting. That would be helpful. Thank you. Sure. The budget had Kent. The budget had us filling both of those vacancies. So the net here is minus one on the headcount. Then, right? The budget did not uh, contemplate it when when you guys passed the budget having a supervisory role at that but the vacancies the vacancy but vacancies. the supervisory role um, I, I don't recall where we're looking at dollar wise but I believe this would end up being more than what was in the budget mm -hmm. so when we come back you're, you're around, saying the supervisor position would be more than the two other positions e either way um, this was this is a bigger position in, uh, than what was the the person who left uh, role However, the staff in the clerk's office was three full time and two part time, so essentially four full time. And this a part time. Pardon me. It'll be four full time and a part time now. No, it would be four three full -time, full time in the clerk's dedicated and one person shared between departments. So it is it is my preference and my assertion that that salary should not all hit the clerk's office. Maybe it's a forty percent clerk. 30% building, 30% water, uh, however you, we you can are, do that. You are correct in, in that it does have to hit multiple departments. That being said, I think almost all the work is going to be in one department. I think there's a little bit of supervisory work, but this person's doing agendas, this person's doing minutes, this person correct. will mainly be residing in mm -hmm. your, your end of the hall. Correct. So I don't think it's and 40 part time clerk's office. And not necessarily. No, but once we see the, the job description and the responsibilities, because that's the issue that came up with this last position with the fire department, we need to see the job descriptions and what the salary that's being offered is so we know. Sure. Thank you. Sir. No problem. Mr. Early was consulted about that as well, too. And Roger, you're, on the building side, you're okay with that? 
that I was in favor of that. Okay. There is a, there is a need for it. I know that I budgeted for it and also Dan budgeted for it. Where we're at money-wise in the budget, not 100% sure. I'm sure Kent would know that. But I know both of us did budget for it. Okay. So I know that some money was taken out for both of us, if not all of it. That's fine. We'll get back. As Kent, as Kent said, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Sure. And when, uh, if that is the route that we go and we um, post it and receive applications, those applications would be reviewed with both of the department heads for their input as well as the actual personnel interview. I would involve both of them as well. So it is a joint decision, and we feel that we get the person that's the best, best fit all the way around. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. And then lastly, I just wanted to make everybody a, so I'm just sorry. One, one last sure. classification. When are you hoping to have this posted? I will route the current job description to you this week for review, for discussion. Is it any different than the one we get? I just want to go back. It shouldn't be, but okay. I just want to make sure that we've got some specific duties for both of the other departments and possibly calling them out so that you can see that such and such clerk, such and such clerk, such and such water, such and such building, so you can see the division of responsibilities. Okay, because the other thing is we'll have to agree on a rate of pay before correct. it's posted as well. It's so. Uh, correct. So we'll have all that to agree and create the position on Monday night, it's board meeting? I would, I would love that if we need to go into <laughs> executive session to discuss some specifics, if that's appropriate, we can do that and then move forward. I just and next next week is the last board meeting of the month. I'm just I understand. Saying, so. I understand. That's why I'm bringing it up today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, to that point, um, I know we have gone to a three meeting a month schedule, but I just want to remind everybody that even though there will not be a formal meeting on that fourth Monday, you still need to very diligently check your mailboxes for approvals of time cards and invoices, et cetera, because we don't want that to lag and have a stack of checks this high on Mayor Ryan and mine's desk for approval. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to let everybody know that uh, State Representative Kelly Burke is um, coordinating a community shred day. It will be at the Worth Township on 11601 South Pulaski this week, Saturday, the 16th from 9 a.m. to noon. Um, you have a limit of two boxes per car. Cardboard boxes cannot be left at the event, and they ask you to remove paper clips, staples, or other kind of bindings, but um, the library had held a shred event last year they're very popular in the area, and this is the closest one that we have. So save some trees, shred some documents. That is all I have, Mayor Ryan. How does that save the tree? The trees yeah, are too late. dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're going to repurpose it. <coughs> Hopefully they recycle. And just for clarification, too, what she means with the staples, she doesn't mean like if you were throwing out your, your checkbook and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was actually partially responsible with the one they did in Crestwood a few months ago, and they, what they did, unfortunately, the box they, they yanked out of my truck had still had the um, st the industrial staple in there that closed the box shut, and the gentleman that grabbed it, I don't know how he did that, but it went right past his face, and the staple went right through his nose. <laughs> and that kind of thing, I, oh, you know, I mean, we had to get the Crestwood Fire Department to haul him away, and he was a, a Crestwood fireman, I believe, yeah, too, so we had to <laughs> take care of that. But, yeah, anything that's got obstruction, please take care of that. I felt terrible for that guy and stuff, yeah, too. Shreddings so. and piercings. Yes, it, it, it's, a, it's a dangerous <laughs> job, you know. So. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Thank you. Uh, moving along, public forum. Anyone in the audience wish to bring anything to the board's attention? And speak to anything on the agenda or other? No one this evening. Thanks. Uh, standing committees, Finance Committee, Trustee McLaughlin. I will have a list of payroll for approval. I will also have a list of accounts payable. And I would also like to um, re add the uh, seminars that uh, the finance director has requested to attend that was tabled from the last meeting. Thank you. Uh, Fire Committee, Trustee McLaurin? I have no report at this time. No report. Mm -hmm. uh, Police Committee, Trustee McGreal? I'll have a list of bills and timesheets for approval. That's all. Thank you. Public Works, Trustee Juarez? I have a list of bills and a list of timesheets for approval and August monthly activity report. 
Uh, very briefly, there was 1,322.4 total hours in streets, 154 hours in drainage, 580 hours in forestry, 200 hours in sanitary, 12 hours in boat launch, 160 hours of vacation time, 70.1 hours of sick time, 36 hours of first quarter holiday, floating holiday, um, 17 employees total monthly hours, 2,552.5 hours, 31.8 hours of workman's comp, and that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, Building Committee, Trustee Zlonski. Yes, Mayor, I have a list of bills and timesheets for approval. We also have a monthly report for August 2017. I have a presentation of a request for a block party of the residents of 12428 South Mansfield Avenue on Saturday, September 23rd from 12 p.m. noon to 12 a.m. midnight. And a request for a year-long raffle from the VFW Post 4450 located at 11800 South Cicero Avenue from October 1st, 2017 through September 31st, 2018. Uh, the building department also had 131 uh, permits issued, and the amount collected was $23,742. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Sewer and Water, Trustee Dazel. <coughs> Presentation of the August 2017 Water Department Activity Report. Uh, the request for authorization to begin the design engineering for the Pulaski Road Corridor TIF Water Main Replacement, and uh, from the documents that the Finance Director had passed, that uh, looks like it'd be just over a million dollars for that as far as the water main replacement goes. Uh, also, the presentation of the employee time records and a list of bills. That's all I have, Mayor. And, again, for clarification, Kent, that is being financed through the Pulaski Avenue TIF, correct? Well, 100% of the cost is $1,344,000, but we have to decide if we're going to expend 100% out of the TIF or if any waters are going to any monies are going to come out of the water department as well. Okay. Uh, next, license committee, Trustee Juarez. I have three new business license applications. Army? You guys want to have that discussion now, or are you having that at the board meeting? Yes. This would only be the design engineering. Right. Design design design. Design. The construction would be until next fiscal year. So right. You're looking at a, you know, what's appropriated this year for, as 144000 for the engineering. Right. So, so then, Danny, just to stand corrected, then, like, like you said, we appropriate 144000 just for engineering at this point. Right. Okay. It's a phase one design engineering. I think what Dan, uh, I think what Dan's asking, and, and uh, he can correct me if I'm wrong, is whether or not this is in the budget. It's a significant item. I gave you some other materials so you can put that help put that in perspective. Uh, but if he's going to start doing what's in the budget. Uh, he needs to make sure that this is something that we're going through on um, and how we're paying for it. So if there's, I, I didn't know if you wanted to have any discussion on it, and if you did, whether you wanted to have it this meeting or at board meeting. Well, my assumption was it was all coming, I mean, from what I understood, it was all coming out of the TIF. If, if that's it's not, it's then that's, that's how right. it's budgeted. But no, 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 he's, well, Rick said 1344. But he's next year's budget. Right, but. That could be coming out all out of the TIF, or not all coming out of the TIF. Yes. I, that that's the part I don't understand. I'd like right. to understand. It's all TIF eligible expenses, mm -hmm. so certainly 100% of it can come out of the TIF, and there's enough money in the TIF at present mm -hmm. in order to facilitate it. Uh, I'm not saying it should or it shouldn't be. Um, I imagine that Dan is all for 100% TIF, <laughs> uh, but at the same point in time, depending upon what our other obligations are or our other desires in order to facilitate any and other uh, TIF applications that may or may not come through. If we deplete by spending 100% of this money is here and we leave a couple projects on the table, at this point in time there appears that there's going to be a surplus of funds, so it doesn't look like it would be a big deal. What do you, wait, what, what do you mean a surplus? Where, I, I'm uh, in the TIF. So based upon the dollar amounts that the finance director had sent out uh, on the Pulaski TIF, you, you saw that there mm -hmm. was a, a surplus. So I, at this point, if we funded it 100%, it, 
it wouldn't be detrimental to well there, there, there would be a surplus if you if you matched it against current obligations but not potential projects exactly right. so and there and there lies the rub right so if if we end up with having more obligations then it's at that point in time it might not be desirous to fund this at a hundred percent tip I, I guess you know I, I mean they would move down into the next discussion about economic development of you know what basically what we want to do right. you know um, it tr trust me it's not you know it's it's, it's not been not noticed right that we knew that that was you know that that was out there and um, you know as we start seeing some of the price tags of some of the requests you know some of these are you know big hitters and it's not it's not you know taken lightly oh hey you know we do that we're not gonna be able to do this this and this so so maybe you know it, it takes more discussions you know as, as a group here and you know in, in a committee of the whole you know to talk about EDC and decide okay what what are what are our ceilings on some of these you know projects so we got 30 people on Pulaski do we say hey this is the ceiling don't even consider don't come with a project that's higher than that I mean maybe we should start having some of those discussions instead of I'm not, I'm not saying wasting time but uh, certainly one of the previous presentations was a pretty big a pretty big number and, and I took it from the board that that's not happening Mike you know uh, might need to sharpen your pencil there but um, at some point the money's gonna run out we're not gonna be able to do all of the projects so um, you, you perked my ears up you know as chairman of the EDC here when you said that hey there's a potential that some of it could be paid out of another budget because I, I thought it was all coming out of TIF but. and I and I think uh, trustee Dizel said it well I'm gonna say the exact same thing slightly differently um, but the exact same thing it is a TIF eligible expense um, you were moving there was water and, and uh, Dan can speak more to the age of the pipe and um, what that means uh, but there are businesses who've invested frankly there's a number of businesses who have already invested in the last uh, two or three years you have a new Taco Bell a new Dunkin Donuts a rebuilt uh, McDonald's a uh, remodeled um, uh, Burger King etc there these businesses expect water quality water just to show up and they don't uh, they don't know anything about old pipes um, so there is definitely a need there it is a TIF eligible expense um, but it is also eligible out of the water fund they're both eligible the water fund sets prices to maintain the long-term rates of the system and it, it, you're not given many opportunities in your role up here to say let's prioritize between funds this is one of those opportunities it has been budgeted this year for design engineering for phase one at $144,000 for the engineering I think the engineering you need to know in order to know more about what's going on but in the multi-year capital project budget that we looked at um, which is five years after that it was budgeted as TIF it can remain as that way it could be some portion of water fund um, that really is a decision that's up to you um, as, as uh, trustee Dizel said um, Dan over here would probably rather it all come out of TIF um, Chris Mannheim on the other end would rather Dan needs the whole amount so, uh, <laughs> it's, it's one of <laughs> yeah and the reality is is that say we were to take a quarter of a million dollars out of this project and make water department pay the quarter million dollars certainly that could be done that's a quarter million dollars of other work that isn't going to get it's done. just another bucket right yeah. exactly yeah. but so are there surpluses in any of the other tips this isn't going to come from any other tip you this can't transfer tip you we can't have, transfer for a no, surplus from there, are, tip? there are two you're, uh, from tips you have to be something called contiguous T you have to touch and tip one um, exists on paper only at this point it is finishing out the bills for the Deer Creek and Arbor Glen it died officially on 1231 it's some money to coming in um, there's a plan in place we can't move money from TIF 1 anymore that that was done by the prior board last November I think it was um, and that that option is over the other two TIFs don't really have much money coming in there's a little bit of money there but they're on the other side of town they don't touch this TIF. Right. The, and this TIF 
um, is getting fifty thousand dollars a year. I've done everything I can to try to say, okay, this thing's make it. You know, I, I can I can work with the county a little bit and get it. I've got up up to fifty thousand dollars a year. The projects that we have been talked about, um, long term in EDC, potential projects. Again, these aren't applications yet, but they're potential projects. Um, frankly, aren't going to move that fifty thousand dollar needle all that much. Uh, your TIF is already ten, uh, going to be, you know, seven, eight years into 23 years. Um, you have to actually build it. Then there's a delay before Cook County actually starts to capture that. Um, and you're doing a facade improvement or doing the the um, driveways really don't move EAV all that much. Well, new business development does, and I I, I heard this. I don't know if this is true, but I heard that. Because uh, I've always wondered for the almost 30 years I've lived here why nothing is in front of the jewel in that big parking lot. But I was I heard that by building this water main that would allow more oh, properties. No, that's a set. Uh, and uh, Dan can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's a separate project that the last board did not decide to put uh, as part of the discussion. That's a whole different set of m monies. This is a replacement of a water main. It's not in the same location. That would be a different project. Okay, but not out of this TIF. Get it in the package. Really up. So that's on the west side. The project we're looking at is the west um, side of Pulaski from 117th south to 120th place. You know, so from the library all the way north to Edco Automotive. Um, what you know, the question I'm posing to the board is, you know, I'd like to get starting with engineering. If there's a good probability that this project will be, you know, under construction next year, whether it's 100% TIF funds or, you know, 90% TIF and 10% <laughs> water, <laughs> somewhere in there. But if there's a high probability that we're going to be building this project at roughly a million dollars, we'd like to get the engineering started so that we're ready. The last board meeting, I'm going to reiterate a question I had for you, Kent, uh, you weren't able to answer. How much is left in this TIF for the place? And that's that's what prompted me. Um, I realized you guys didn't know that, so that's what that document uh, that I gave is. That's a tough. It's not a set number because you passed redevelopment agreements. Um, so well, minus the money that's earmarked <coughs> for other projects. What do we? The, have the left? stuff that you've absolutely committed, the money that's in the bank, as it were, or in our accounting system, minus um, is to be essentially three million dollars. Um, but there's a lot of projects out there that you've talked about in purchasing things or demolishing. In, in one case, we own a building already, demolishing that building, um, the consulting services, the attorney services, the services, frankly, that we have not yet paid for, the, um, the real estate agent, um, the poles that get knocked over, the banners. I mean, there's all sorts of other costs, let alone the projects like the one that came before here. Um, so uh, that's just the outright absolutely committed to at this point, and you're going to have to take some more because some services are going to eat into that. Um, if you take, if you did the whole, uh, the stuff that we're pretty darn sure, and I, and I say pretty darn sure because I, I met with Chris to, to say where are we pretty sure we're going to do it, um, and we took out the whole water project. Uh, we're left with 735,000. Again, not counting legal, not counting the other, um, and a s one or two projects um, can clean that out. That's why in the email that I sent, um, I also talked about um, it, it. You might want to start thinking about the timing of the TIF and whether or not yep. this is a 23-year TIF or this is something less than that. If you want to just do this till essentially the money runs out, you can kill a TIF early if you want. These, are, these aren't decisions that have to be made immediately. What Dan is asking is, are we pretty sure we're going to do the water line? And if so, whether or not it's coming from whichever side or, or some combination thereof, um, he's going to want uh, what's in the budget, which is 144000 of phase one engineering. I do think as part of this discussion, it's worth uh, having Dan talk a little bit about the pipe that he's talking about replacing and why that has made this list. Do we discuss that? Well, yeah. So 
as you saw in the, the packet, you know, this water main was installed in 1961. You know, it, it's had a significant number of breaks, um, 10 or 12 of them in the last 10 years. And the, the consequence of that is that you have a, a lot of businesses that rely on water. It, you know, a, a food, fast food service, if they don't have water, they have to close down by health standards. So, you know, we have a break there. They're losing revenue. The village is losing revenue. You know, it's costly to do repairs there because it's you're closing down a lane of traffic. You're doing repairs in state right away that, you know, there are higher standards and it has to be done immediately. So it's high cost for repairs in those areas. And essentially, like I said, you know, just the age of the pipe, I mean, it's due for replacement. And the nice thing about that is this is a solution. It's not a Band-Aid. So instead of patching pipe, like we've been forced to, this is actually renewing the infrastructure. Correct. Right. And there's no pipes that are expected to last 50 years. This one already has lasted over 50 years. I think one of the other things to consider is the village has already invested a great deal of money into the Pulaski Corridor between sidewalks being redone, the paver bricks on the corners, the decorative street light poles, the landscaping. Um, each time that water main breaks, we put a Band-Aid on it. Now we're incurring the cost of new signage, restoration work. It starts to add up just to see this thing pop again down the road. So if this is a TIF-eligible expense, I think it's worth the investment. So consider that as well um, with what's already been put on Pulaski for right now. It's a great explanation, Mike, because you know, really when we have a tool like this available, we need to utilize these tools as we should. One other thing to add is that um, we did already replace 1,600 feet of main on Pulaski to the north of 117th Street. So a portion of that s section was done. We just didn't have the funding at the time to do it before. A lot of money was invested in the TIF on those, you know, beautifications. Understood. I hope this works out, Dan. So thank you. So is, is that, um, can he bring that forward? the board, I guess, is through what he's asking, because if the, if it is going to be in this y fiscal year, he needs to have the uh, engineering started. So is this a project? It doesn't have to be absolutely decided today whether the whole thing's coming out of the TIF as it's been, not budget, because it's after the FY18 budget, but it's been discussed, or some smaller portion, but the question is, are we sure that this project's going forward? in which case the um, phase one engineering part, which is in the FY18 budget, would be expended. Well, we have to get the engineering done in order to get a realistic price. Sure. Once we get the realistic price, then we can debate the other at that point right. in time. But either way, the monies are going to be available <coughs> either through TIF, through water, or the combination thereof. Right, and he's just saying it's in the budget. We've talked about it. Can we start the engineering? And then oh. he wants to bring that to the board. How long does it take to get this engineering and price back? Well, the you know, probable cost, you know, opinion of uh, probable cost, it wouldn't take too long for them to do, but the overall engineering would take several months. Okay. Right. We just don't, I mean, the EDC is moving forward. I don't want to, I mean, are we be asked, being asked to pause here? Because what if it's much higher or, you know? Well, based on the quotes or the uh, bids we just received on the Keeler trip project, it's probably going to be under what we're estimating because okay. you know, those bids came in fairly low. And either way, even if it were higher, and it doesn't sound like it's going to be, it wouldn't be so material that it's going to affect what you're, you're talking right. about. So you're just asking for the 144000 for the engineering right now? Or is that asking to go forward with figuring out what the engineering costs? It's budgeted at 144,000. That one's already budgeted in. It's yep. budgeted and you know, appropriated, but yes, we don't know what the engineering cost is. Basically, we have to request for qualifications for engineers and mm -hmm. then negotiate their costs. Which uh, budget was it appropriate under? What um, budget? Pulaski Road Corridor TIF. Pulaski Road Corridor TIF. Okay. And, and uh, that that budget. Uh, for your convenience, was part of uh, the email I sent. Is one of the two documents, as well as the uh, five-year projection beyond the budgeted year too. So you can kind of see what where it's going. The rest of that money was budgeted for the next fiscal year, the actual construction. 
but again, you don't approve next year's budget yet, right. just where, where we anticipate it to be. Anybody else? Mike? As far as I'm concerned, it sounds acceptable. I say we go forward with it. So, Well, we'll put on, for the chair to put that on the agenda next week. Sure. Yeah. Uh, moving along, uh, License Committee, Trustee Juarez? I have three new business license applications, one for a coin, la coin laundromat, 4039 West 115th Street, one for Ron's Temporary Help Services, 4024 West 127th Street, and Kirkle, Kirkle Precision Tool, 12600 South Laramie Avenue. Trustee, I, I actually had a meeting Friday with the, one of our fire prevention officers, and I asked him, um, I'll make sure he gets a hold of you. He, had a, he wanted to uh, have a discussion with your committee about a, um, a, li a license request that maybe is in the process right now. So I'll tell him to make sure he gets a hold of you on okay. it. Did, did he speak to you yet? No. Okay, I'll make sure he talks to you. Okay. Okay. Economic Development, Trustee Pierce. Um, before I bring Chris up for uh, the August activities report, uh, the mayor, myself, and Ms. O'Donnell met with uh, John Bovary of Affiliated Realty. He owns the or works with the um, the property that has Pappas, Wings, JJ's. That first property that you see when you're coming into town from the south. What? He doesn't. He doesn't represent Pappas. Well, it, the property, the the pro, the whole pro, that that property. Or no, true. no, affiliated actually owns the strip mall there. Well, it says here 122.02 to 117. That's the entire strip mall, yeah. isn't it? They're two separate buildings. Okay, well, he presented a, uh, he made a presentation to us to, um, he's considering a 50-50 share of uh, redoing the facade and, and that, on that whole strip mall. That's the way it was represented. So maybe the address yeah, is right correct. Just, yeah. And, and the picture does not include. It does not include, okay, so it's. All of this. So Sorry. It's to the north of Pappas's. Okay. In that area with Pappas, I guess I should have said. Um, first thing that you see coming in north, so the people that you know work in Mount Greenwood, that's what they see. Um, give a pretty good presentation. Um, he has asked to present his presentation in front of the board. Um, our next committee meeting would be October 9th. Uh, I'm going to set an EDC meeting at 6:30 p.m. that evening for that presentation. Chris? And actually, I love your suggestion of coming up with a cap Ceiling. on some of these projects. I think it's a great idea because I'm sure that you've spent That's an right. enormous amount of time sitting there and trying to, to make the deal. But if you knew that it was outside of what those accepted business rule would be, is that uh, right? And the uh, that's absolutely right, Trustee. And uh, uh, we've also continue. Uh, Roger Hopkins and I continue to work uh, hand in hand with Kent uh, about what funds are available and what kind of return on investment we can possibly get out of these. A couple other projects are in play, but they're already in the report, and uh, we'll be only presenting those if and when um, they show us some kind of return on investment. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Trustee, anything else? That's all I have, Mayor. Okay. Planning and zoning, Trustee Zielinski. Uh, there is no report for planning and zoning this night, uh, tonight. Okay. Special committee reports, village properties, Trustee McLaurin. Okay. Roger has asked for us to review the updated lease agreements for Heritage 1 and 2 and provide any feedback. Roger, do you have anything you want to add at this time? Not at this time, unless anybody has any questions that if you guys have gone through it. Any kind of feedback would be helpful. If not, I would like to put it on the agenda for approval and start 
putting this in place? The, it was a blank format for the lease. The only thing I saw that was obvious was the smoking and non-smoking public areas. Was there anything of substantive change that? Uh, there's a, there was some that changed. Uh, the smoking areas, uh, the pest under M, pest and vermin, so that we can go back after um, for any kind of pests that arrive. Um, laundry, we did a little bit of changing with. Uh, the doormats, it, it signifies exactly what days, where they can be, and also out on the balconies, what they can have on the balconies from what day to what day. Um, Oh, also the no grilling, no grills. Um, <coughs> other than that, just changing some language. Those are wooden balconies, right? They are. Yeah, so that's. Right away. Do we happen to put anything about um, the bed bugs? <laughs> Did you change anything about. Yes, that is under M. I know that one all too well. <laughs> I was really curious. Letter ebb. <laughs> that has been addressed. Roger, did the attorney review this as well? We went back and forth with this, and this is our <coughs> final copy with, okay. the, with our attorneys. Thanks. Okay. Trustees, any questions on that? All right, thank you. Next, um, Insurance Committee, Trustee McGrill. I have no report, Mayor. Thank you. Next, ordinance legislation. Trustee Pierce? I have no report, Mayor. I'm going to want to put that uh, okay. ordinance on there. Oh. Yes. I to travel. <laughs> Second page. Um, yes, Mayor, we had a request. We have a request for approval of ordinance amending Chapter 2, two administration by adding Article 22, administra advance and reimbursement of expenses of the municipal <coughs> code for the village of Allison. I just don't like spending money. I would like a modification on that. I think $100 a day for a car is ridiculous. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I would like to see that lowered. We can certainly, you know what, I don't have my copy right in front of me here. Um, do you have one? Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we can certainly, and we can certainly uh, amend numbers, trustee, as you just suggested, yeah, too. So. And so yeah, the only one that, that really struck me was $100 a day on the car, which I, I can't fathom why yeah, any vehicle would be that expensive you know what, however I don't I can also see a need potentially if there is a group traveling someplace where you might need a minivan where it's a joint or multi use vehicle right um, trustee Joe Kankar actually drafted this whole ordinance and he did say we can if we wanted to modify anything we could but <coughs> You make a great point, too. For, if for any reason you did need an oversized vehicle to transport more than two people, yeah, it might run you a few extra dollars to do it. The $100 might be about right. Well, even a minivan would come out to $100 a day. With deposits and everything else yet, too? I'm, I've done a lot of traveling for work and have yeah. never okay. come remotely close what do to $100 you, what, do, what, would you con what would you consider a good rate for that? Personally, I would say $50 max for an individual and if it is a joint rental then I would go up to 75. I, I don't rent that often that's why I'm asking so I really don't know. And that's what my recommendation and Joe was anybody else. I, I believe uh, yeah attorney Kankar was using a lot of the published rates and so forth so it would the anyone on this side too any, any thoughts I would want to go to me you can get a lot of car for 100 bucks a day. Okay you want to go to 75 dollars? <laughs> I've gotten a Tesla in Los Angeles for under 100 bucks. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, do we want to, um, do, uh, board? Do you want to get a consensus? Do we want to reduce this to maybe 60 or 70 dollars? Uh, don't know that we do it that often, anyhow. 
but right we really don't uh, well how about a compromise at sixty dollars you want to do that everybody okay with that I, I defer to the people who travel sure yeah. mm-hmm. is it my, my last rental car in atlanta was 35 bucks a day so okay and that was for a full-size car all right, so I'm, I'm going to put $60 a day on this thing mm-hmm. just to reduce it. The um, also we had parking, $50 for parking, which I can tell you, parking downtown Chicago, you can easily do that in $40, no problem. Mm-hmm. Um, public transportation, $20. The other one we had on here was hotel stay per night was $200. Anyone want to amend that? Or do you want to stay with that number? You travel a lot. I mean, I've had, I've stayed in hotel rooms that were more than that, and you look at the room and you go, "What?" But, um. <laughs> but you're right. I've, I've and recently I was at a conference down in Indianapolis, and it was not cheap for something like that. So, Probably so and especially realistic. at conferences and those kind of things, quite often the hotel rate ends up being okay. in the 180 range. So, and then I have no issues with the two. As far as the per diem for meals, breakfast, we were allotting fifteen dollars. Lunch was twenty dollars and dinner was thirty dollars. That's reasonable. Yeah, about right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. My company is fifteen, twenty, and twenty-five. So. Okay. Clark was saying uh, her company she travels as well and it's uh, how much? Fifteen, twenty, and twenty-five. So they're right there with these numbers on top. Go ahead. Um, I know the attorney put the, this together, and I'm willing to go with the GSA published rate. It's uh, my understanding is it's similar to the IRS rate. There's there, well, we've traditionally done the IRS rate um, for consistencies. I think they're pretty similar in terms of uh, pricing. I'm willing to go with this, and, and but traditionally we've done the IRS rate. Okay, so the only amendment then as far as reimbursement costs on this will be the rental car as, as discussed at $60. That was the only change we're going to make to this. Okay. Do we, uh, on the IRS rate versus the GSA rate, does anyone have any experience? Between the two? No. Yeah. I have experience with the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> Reimbursement rate for vehicles. <laughs> oh, no. Could we make it the IRS just because I, I know where that is? I guess it's okay, I guess. Yeah. Either way. Okay. All right, so, well, uh, uh, Trustee Pierce, if you would please, can you put that on the agenda for next week? It is on the agenda. <laughs> Next on the on this agenda, information technology, Trustee Dalzell. No report, Mayor. Thank you. Human Resources, Trustee McGrill. No report. Uh, health and Pollution, Trustee Pierce. No report, Mayor. Uh, traffic Safety, Trustee Dalzell. Uh, the 800-pound gorilla in the room. I'd um, like to have a discussion on the Red Light Photo Enforcement Program. Uh, and I will defer to Chief Miller, who has already done some analysis to the same. Everyone got a lot of numbers in the last couple of weeks, including today. I printed out the final numbers that Trustee Pierce asked for. Um, essentially, this is just up for discussion. Bring in some other camera companies to talk to. Um, basically, the reason this came up is what I believe to be a significant deficiency in service from Gatso. I'm losing you here. Mm. Uh, Talking a little quiet there, Jay. Okay. <laughs> so essentially, this is just a discussion tonight on whether or not the board feels we should bring in some other companies to look at for red light cameras. Um, over the past few months, um, I've been looking at Gatso's um, billing and what they've been sending us for citations. And I believe that we're paying for a service that's significantly um, deficient uh, as far as I'm concerned. So based upon the studies that you guys were provided, uh, if you'd like to, we can schedule some other companies to come in. Uh, the company that put together this study obviously went um, above and beyond and actually put a camera up for us to test it compared to Gatso's cameras. Um, so if it's something that you're interested in, I'd be willing to set those up for you and go from there. All right. Can you go over the uh, numbers that Gatso had versus uh, Red Speed? 
So Red Speed set up a camera. This was for uh, July 28th and 29th, correct? Correct. Red Speed set up a camera at 127th and Cicero. And Southbound. Correct. Okay. Where the one is currently for Gatso. Okay. Same direction. They recorded 100 violations for Southbound Cicero, including the two left turn lanes. They recorded the right turn lane separately because currently Gatso does not record the right turn lane. I'm not sure why that is. I may know more tomorrow. I have a meeting with Gatso tomorrow. Um, that was under the agreement uh, that uh, Lieutenant Paul Meyer and uh, Chief Rads had with them. It's they decided very much against possible. it for whatever reason uh, because they said something about it has its own turn arrow. But being that it's a 90 degree turn, there's no reason why we can't turn that one on. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure. I don't want to comment on it. I don't know the specifics as to why that is not recorded. Okay. I don't know why we're recording four out of five lanes. Um, it, it seems a little silly, but. And we're not doing all directions either. Are and we? we're not only, no, we're only doing southbound Cicero. Okay. Um, so they recorded 100 violations southbound over those four lanes. They recorded 77 additional for the right turn lane. So a total of 177. For that same time period, actually for a little bit longer of a time period, over two days, including that same day that Red Speed was out there, Gatso sent us a total of 11 for the same intersection. You said Red Speed, you meant Safe Speed, right? I'm sorry, I get them all. There's so many different red, speeds. Red Flex and Safe Speed. I mean, two, There's all the different, different speed, okay. speed ones, whatever they are. But uh, Gatso recorded 11 that they had sent us for review. Um, I think that when we're utilizing technology like this, the whole purpose is to <coughs> reduce accidents by capturing as many violations as possible. That's what the technology is for. It's up to the officer to decide whether or not it's actually a violation. I have a hard time digesting 11 traffic violations over a two-day period from Gatso when there's 35,000 cars a day going through that intersection southbound. It just doesn't make sense. Would you say, I mean, so just so I understand, there's, there's a camera event and then there's a violation. Who determines the violation? Not the camera. So did they? Did both companies capture the same amount of events or camera camera flashes? No, uh, Gatso was significantly significantly lower. So what happens is the camera captures events, and it sent it gets sent to an office, and then they go through them and they weed out the funerals, emergency vehicles, things of that nature, and then they send us the final product. And the officer reviews those and makes a determination whether or not it is a violation or it's not a violation. So Gatso's captured images are significantly less than safe speed. Okay, so it wasn't human error, it was camera error. Correct. Okay. Okay, uh, when I talked to Gatso, they said that they had actually recorded 127 events over those two days and that we were sent 22 violations. And that's why I was concerned about the numbers that you said, because out of the same four lanes, the 104 events that you recorded, were any of those even discarded for any of the following reasons? Uh, erroneous lane errors, um, plates blocked, uh, trailers versus tractors uh, when trucks trigger an event. Uh, well, that is an issue. The trailers, if you, I mean, I'm not an engineer, but I, you don't really have to be to see that the camera, as high as it is at 127 Cicero, once there's a truck in one of those lanes, we're not capturing anything. Okay, so my point is that uh, these 104 events that they captured, they're not actual violations. They're just events that were captured by the camera. Correct. So in essence, it could have been the same exact number or even less, possibly. Uh, no, I disagree with that. But you don't know exactly how many out of the 104 would have actually been violations? Well, I don't know what information they gave you, but according to the computer, when we printed it out, we had a total captured amount of 11 citations for that same time period. Okay, well, they told me that they sent us 22. So, uh, But anyway, 
with the red speed, there was 104. But red speed or safe, 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 safe speed? Or safe speed, I'm sorry. Let's be clear. clear. <laughs> um, they, they sent 104, but they didn't actually go over the video and determine which ones were actual violations. They actually did go over the video, and they actually sent me a copy. I have a copy of it, and I actually went through the video until I hit about 20, and I was like, well, that's, you know, sufficient. It's already double what we had from Gatso. Um, the other issue is during that same, they did another study, and I know we're focusing on 127th and Cicero, but for an entire month I had one citation at 127th and Pulaski. I mean. One? Yeah. Have you have we brought it up to this company at at any time? They'll be here tomorrow. Okay, so Chief, you sent I I, I request and I do appreciate. I asked a lot of you in the past week. <laughs> you gave me a lot back. I appreciate that. One thing that I did ask for was the contracts, and you gave that back to me right away. So I understand from what I understand is you're the one that handles that any kind of remediation or whatever with with these companies. And reading that contract with Gatso, it says that it says right in there that you've got to give them notice. Uh, hey, your 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 product's not performing, and have we been doing that? They're going to have notice tomorrow. But my my problem is I don't think their product's been performing for years. But you're just now the boss. <laughs> I'm just now the boss. Okay. And and duly noted, there are significant out fees to get out of these contracts. I don't disagree with that. All, all I'm saying is that it's up to you guys to decide if you want to go a different direction. If, um, the out fees are significant. Uh, however, that doesn't mean that future projects have to be given to Gatso at this point. We can go a different direction and keep Gatso until the contract runs out. When is that? When does that happen? Huh? Well, that all depends if you want it, to. It depends on how you look at it. I mean, there's some that say 19 and some that the say 21. Right. Actual contract is up July 29, 2019, 2019, and to get out of the contract, it would cost us, which is a 22-month period as of the beginning of next month, and it would cost $1,000 per camera, which we have four cameras currently in town. It would cost us $88,000 just to get rid of them. Yeah, That's I don't think so. <laughs> the contract actually, I believe, expires next year unless we agree to let them put in another camera at 115th and Cicero. Which, once you agree to a camera, doesn't have to go through an IDOT approval process. Do we have any that are in the approval process right now? The one at 115th and Cicero is in the approval process. Gatso is waiting for me to sign off. So on wouldn't that be an intent to purchase? or an in, I mean, wouldn't that invoke I that extra I haven't year? signed anything yet. All right. Well, somebody else did. Probably right. I mean, no, it's waiting for my signature. Well, you say, sir, you say extra, pro, you know, new projects. So I would consider that probably a new project from the previous board. So if it's gone through, if it, you know, I, I don't know the process. I guess I'm asking you for it to go through IDOT, you know, approval. Don't you have to have chosen a camera company before then, or is it afterwards? They can always switch off um, from one vendor to another. That's not a big deal. It happens pretty regularly, and. The turnaround time for our cameras now, if we were to sign off on it, would be seven to eight months now to transfer from Gaso to another company going through IDOT. So that's going to alleviate some lag time there as far as payout amounts. Um, but uh, I, I'm also of the opinion that if we're going to have 50,000 cars a day coming through Cicero, that there should be more than one direction of travel um, being monitored. I'm not really sure how that all came about, but uh, southbound Cicero, I don't know how they got picked to be the one avenue that we're monitoring out of a four-intersection area, and it's not even the most traveled. And how Do you know from personal experience, though, that intersection, I mean, and heading southbound is quite a nightmare because prior to the camera going up, the vehicles that were heading south had no regard for your, your typical traffic laws that say don't enter an intersection unless you can proceed through the intersection. Right, there was and a so backup. And so I used to get stuck on a daily basis by vehicles that stopped in the middle of Cicero and prohibited vehicles that needed to turn left. I mean, and I, I would get off, I would get off of 294 
at 127th Street and then need to head northbound and couldn't make the left turn because of the vehicles that were stopped in this, the middle of Cicero. This won't alleviate that. Well, but once, as soon as the the signs went up for the red light cameras, people stopped stopping in the middle of Cicero. <laughs> so the signs corrected the problem, the, but the, the signs cam corrected the that problem. Camera I, I don't know that you know, <laughs> the broken camera didn't issues, correct anything. How many how many active red light cameras do we have? We have two at 123rd and Cicero. We have the one at 127th and southbound Cicero, and we have one westbound at 127th and Pulaski. Now, if we were to, say, go with these guys at 115th and Cicero, does that extend the terms of the contract at all, or it is it a separate contract for that intersection? No, if we agree to go ahead with the 115th and Cicero, it extends the contract by one year, which would bring us to the 2019 date, 2019 date that Trustee Zielinski was referring to. Okay. Why these guys? If you and let me let me just throw a point out there. If you go from 95th Street all the way to 159th Street, they have all Safe Speed has all of the cameras except for the two in Alsip. Why why Safe Speed? I'm just just curious. And, and if you I don't know if you saw the news on Wednesday night, Safe Speed wasn't really seen in a great light in Crestwood. Well, that's, that was a traffic light issue. That That's not Safe Speed's That's That's issue. Safe Speed's camera. It's Safe Speed's camera, but it's not their red light. They don't decide where the red lights go. I'm just, I'm just curious why Safe Speed. I mean, there's I many camera companies out there. I don't believe in reinventing a wheel. I made it this far in my career by stealing other people's good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I go with works with our neighbors and what works for them, and if it works for them, it's more than likely going to work for us. And it, it is an added point. Safe Speed also has a camera on our property at 111th Street. Uh, Except that. the state gave the Oak Lawn that that's, intersection. That's a jurisdictional agreement. Okay. I'm I, I just pointing that it was you know, on our <laughs> side of the street. And you know. for the benefit of that, uh, our officers don't have to take the accident reports from that okay. intersection. I'm just I, I mean, I'm just saying that you know there's there's other camera companies out there. Oh, there's, this yeah, one there's, is very heavily politically connected in this area. I'm uh, just pointing that out myself. Um, I just want to make sure that we are looking at if Gatso's not performing. First of all, we owe them per the contract to notify, right. to notify and and allow them to remediate. Um, secondly, um, as we it's been pointed out, you know, very often, you know, we're you know. We got to watch what we're paying for. Right. This is I just agree. one data um, point. Red speeds another. Uh, red flex. No, not red, red flex. We already went through them. <laughs> um, red speed is uh, also a quality company. Um, like I said, this place did a lot of the legwork. We can look at whoever you want. I'm just there's, telling you that this isn't working. <laughs> Well, I, I would think it would be helpful to have multiple price quotes. I mean, just to get an idea of, I mean, because especially with Gatso and the fact that they're billing us right off the bat whether we collect the money or not. Well, you know what, though? That's, that's based on state law. Is it? Absolutely. State I mean, law says that you have to pay for the services. Mm -hmm. And on some of these other vendors where they, they offer to only pay for paid violations, that's not following the leather law based on the state statute. So if if I read it right, Safe Speed is saying is saying that they only pay on the paid violation. They're so not doing it based on state th law. Then that discounts them right there. And my other thing is is I'm not sure about Red Speed. I haven't looked at their product yet, but um, Safe Speed also monitors their sensors. So when one of their sensors or their camera starts to malfunction, it sends an alert to their people that that needs to be looked at or replaced or whatever. I don't believe Gatso has that. If they if they do, it's that's not working either. So <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be to our benefit to to go out there and solicit pricing from the people out there to do this. I understand that it's not a popular concept. For those that go through a red light, to have to write it a check for 100 bucks. At the same point in time as having seen it from the other side, when people go through a red light and take out somebody who's just driving to work or to an event, uh, there's a lot of tragedy that's involved with that as well. So, 
it would be my recommendation that we'd go out there and we solicit these vendors to come in there give price proposals um, give testimony as to what their capabilities are and especially now that we have a knowledge of uh, some of the deficiencies that we've got at present and maybe gas can correct that and life will be good that's but fine. in the meantime it wouldn't hurt to also be prepared for the anticipated end date of the current contract but to the chief's point as well is that mm -hmm. right now we've got 127th and Cicero which has got a huge annual average daily traffic count of vehicles going through there um, for years it had been the number one accident intersection in the state of Illinois and being a matter of public safety the camera can enforce that location far more effectively and efficiently than a police officer attempting to do the same cameras there are 365 mm -hmm. days a year doesn't call in sick doesn't take a lunch break doesn't have to go to the bathroom <laughs> now, doesn't get hit by a car doesn't get hit by a car why are they only monitoring southbound I mean we just, I mean I'm not sure I, I think there might be an engineering thing it's gonna cost a lot of money to engineer because of the way Cicero kind of like lifts off basically it's a big bridge almost mm -hmm. with the tollway going underneath it that's the only thing I can think of I, I might know a little bit more because tomorrow. I thought I there it's, a, were it's a throwback to red flex Reflex at the time charges a little over four thousand dollars on a monthly fee per approach, and as a cost aspect of it, it'd be sixteen thousand dollars monthly to monitor that intersection. Okay. So I, I think thought there used to started. be more cameras. No. no. Never. Okay. So, Chief, based on what you just did, with when you had them put up a, a challenge camera, let's say. To, to see how the first camera our existing was performing did you have your officers review all those tapes to validate the, to see if those were good um, violations we reviewed most of those uh, we didn't review every single one we once we got to a point where it was clearly more than yet so we stopped reviewing those okay so the current cameras aren't performing well and you use you used a vendor with a obviously a good performing proven system based on what you said you did some <coughs> investigation with all of our neighboring communities to see if they were satisfied and I, I'm assuming they were correct okay so I find it hard to believe that politics has anything to do with people not stopping at the stoplight you know I mean I, I don't think that's a, it's a fair comparison I don't know why you bring that up how is it that you know people like you said, and trust you, you told me Thursday about the segment on Channel 7, and I saw that. And it's interesting to see. I feel bad for all the people that got citations making right hand turns. You know, when. Mayor? <laughs> so, I haven't gotten any, and I, and I frequent that mall all the time, whether it's Best Buy or Target or Kohl's or anything like that. I go over that way all the time. I've never received a citation for that kind of thing. You stop <laughs> as you should, and I guess that's the end result of that. So. Good, lucky for me, I'll find some good wood over here someplace. So, I saw um, that segment, and, and I can appreciate what the people are saying because it's not a 90-degree geometry for the intersection. Sure. But there's a large white line that mm -hmm. indicates where the stop is. Stop. Anyone who went through driver education knows what the big white line means. <coughs> and Prudence says you look to your left to make sure that it's safe to go ahead and make your right turn on red. And... Some of those people, you know, based on the video. You didn't see one of those cars come to a complete stop on right. that video. But but so. also, to the point of this whole safety aspect of it, is that I agree that what we have to do is we have to make sure that we have a solid business rule for the issuance of citations. I think that if a person is doing two miles an hour into a right turn on red, if they stop 15 foot to the positive side of the this white stop line and then cruise through it's not an egregious <clears throat> violation and therefore I personally don't think it should be into that business rule to where people who are making a right turn on red at a very low rate that don't cause an issue shouldn't be getting a citation but I also do believe that that people who certainly do a straight through at 30 miles an hour that's an egregious violation. You know that that person is just looking from for what, an accident. From what sure. I understand, 
for the right turn lane, we have, or I should say you have, the ability to adjust that through the companies because I seen there was a huge difference between the uh, safe speed or red speed. What, safe what, speed is safe speed proposed. And Gatso, uh, there's a big difference in the amount of time that they're allowed. So, I mean, unless you're comparing apples to apples. Gatso's not even monitoring the right turn. Right. Right, I understand that. But I'm saying even uh, even the left turn, I mean, there's there's a certain amount of time that they give or a certain speed that they give uh, that actually I believe you have the have control over um, That's set, the business setting, role. setting that. That's the business role. Okay. So as long as both companies are actually – monitoring at the same rates then i would agree with your numbers the, the problem is though i can change we can have the settings however we want but if we can't capture the license plate of the cars making the left hand turns through the red it doesn't matter oh i understand that's why i said uh, you know Katsu claims they captured 127 events on those two days it, but the after camera's got to be higher to be able to get over those. But you can tell them that, right? Again, or you can point that out to them. Or you know. I'm going to tell them tomorrow. It's going to be a long meeting. Right. <laughs> Mayor, I'm not sure that you finished Sounds your, like this your you, were, you were addressing me and you stopped mid-sentence. I'm not sure you finished no, your thought. I, what I'm saying is you mentioned that you know the company that the chief identified with, I thought they did a great job with, with what they had to do to prove up that our cameras aren't, aren't performing like they should. We physically don't have the means of overseeing that in intersection at 127th and Cicero. There's just no place for a patrol car to park there and actually oversee that intersection. So the government gives you these tools, and obviously the chief is utilizing these tools as he's fit. But if he has a challenge camera up there that says the current system doesn't perform the way it should, I think we rely on him for public safety to decide what is best for the community at this point. That's why he's in that position. Yes, we do, but we also um, have a contract in place, and it sounds from this discussion that we should have met with them sooner when we had this problem, recognized it, sat down, see if they can fix it or not. Um, that's a place to start. That's and like asking them to accelerate their, their violations if they're not No, catching, to see if their catching. cameras are, are functioning properly, like Chief Miller said. I don't think I'd, I'd ask them to adjust. I don't know that. I'd just well, I think the contract says that we need to do that. that. You know what? I'm we not have, understanding um, something. So I'm sorry. Excuse me. We, got, we received this whole big packet here, okay? So there's emails and there's, um, what are these, a web... Who put the this internet. packet together anyway? I did. So Trustees I don't understand speech. something. So it says here that why does it matter that O'Sullivan is ma is named in here with safe speed? And what does O'Sullivan, because a lot of this stuff has to do with O'Sullivan and having a recently launched a consulting business with safe speed. So, but what I remember with O'Sullivan um, from and of course hearing things because I am new to all this. So for what I remember hearing from Sullivan is that he had something to do po politically here to work with someone here in Alsta. So are we giving him this as a favor back with his company? Is that why we're only launch or working with this company, Safe Speed, or is it because really we don't have another company that we're working with? So why can't we? go out and get other bids from other companies because is this the same O'Sullivan that was working with your campaign? John O'Sullivan is, is the, he is the Worth Township Supervisor mm -hmm. and he is Chief of Staff for Cook County Commissioner Edward Moody. And he also owns a consulting firm that his his direct client is Triad Consulting, which I wouldn't know about. Absolutely, one hundred percent sure, Mayor. I, I'm pretty sure you would you know, know that. No, I, I'm. Hey, I, Nick, uh, I'll, I'll, please. Yeah, he's going to speak for. Hold on, he's going to handle this for you. Yeah, because I, I, I had the floor there. Um, all I'm asking here, okay, Mayor. I'm not. I'm not. You know, pointing any, you know, fingers that there's any any kind of favors or nepotism, but it is clear John O'Sullivan is a consultant for Triad, which owns 
safe speed cameras. Okay. All I'm asking is that when we get into the dis prove that, sir, and should not accuse him. I think you should prove that. Okay. It's it, it, even if you skip skip O'Sullivan, Triad Consulting is the owner of safe speed cameras, sir, and you know that. I don't know that. Um, and they are we're a major campaign donor to you. So all I'm asking is that. Anybody that's received monies from these companies just recuse themselves from the discussions, just for transparency and and, and just right now I'm relying on the chief's professional. I am opinion. too, sir, and that's why I'm asking him to get more than just this one. Right, and 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 I agree with you, and I thought that that's the direction that we were going was to sit there and to try to find a company that would give us the best quality service for the lesser of costs. We're, we're not at a point of sitting there and awarding a contract. No, I just, I, so sir, that's I, the part that I, I guess I'm confused here, is that you know, a deficiency's been identified. There was and fix it the, exactly, and and the chief's yeah. got a meeting tomorrow to sit there and to address that aspect of it, and maybe <laughs> this whole thing will be moot by a remedy provided by Gatso. And if so, then great. We're good. They're out of Massachusetts. That's pretty much what the hang-up was. So getting them out here to meet with them. Um, Red Speed is also a local um, company uh, from the area. Um, so those are different options that we can look at. But the first thing I had to do is make sure that my eyes weren't deceiving me and that there were deficiencies. And that's why it's brought here. So your concern with them being in Massachusetts is do, do they fly somebody out here to fix it or do they not have local fixing people? They're coming out. One of their representatives, our, 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 um, our representative is coming out tomorrow from Massachusetts to meet with me about the issues uh, and particularly about or twice out with the Pulaski. Right, but I'm, I'm sure that would be like an account executive. But if, if you were to call them today and say, hey, listen, uh, we noticed that the the strobe light's not flashing or what anymore. I mean, would they they have would have to fly somebody from Massachusetts to fix that, or they have a local I'm agreement? I'm not sure. I, I, I haven't had a lot of work with the red light gamer companies up until this point. Sure. So, Chief, so in my, my purview up till now. So my, my point was uh, I, I understand red speed and safe speed are both from Chicago, and that does have a local, you know, that, that makes life easier, you know, because because they're local. But, if I mean, if it's just from an account executive standpoint, I mean, you know, I, I don't know that that matters. I mean, well, from I'll a maintenance a standpoint. I yeah. mean, I'll know a lot more tomorrow, but the issue is, I mean, I do have a hard time telling them that their product isn't working. They should kind of know that. You know, a lot of these other companies have sensors in place to identify when there's issues with the camera or whatnot. We've also asked for all their maintenance records for 127th and Cicero and 127th and Pulaski so we can see if there's been uh, checks on the um, equipment and stuff like that. We haven't gotten them yet. But. And I want to. Excuse me. I want to address something. I don't need Trustee Pierce to speak for me. Thank you. I, I didn't get. I did not receive this packet until I got here. Same and as I was sitting here, I'm I'm flipping through it because I didn't know any of this information. So I'm just learning it now. But I, as I'm flipping through it, I see a lot of things here that are not that don't sound right to me or don't look right to me. So I, I was just that. commenting on it or asking a question about it. So I was just that, I, I, I just, just put it in there as a matter the, of fact. I appreciate fact. the comment. That Mr. Pierce, uh, trustee. No, Pierce I wanted to hear from you, trustee. Sure. No, I, I have a mind of my own. I just needed to read over this. Thank you. No, I wanted to hear from you. Excuse me. I just have a few things. Uh, first of all, the representative from uh, Gasso that actually takes care of the Allsup account does live in Chicago. His name is Rich Cosina. Uh, that'll probably be the person that you're contacting. Uh, that's not who's coming that, out. That's tomorrow. not who's coming out, but no. he actually lives right here in Chicago. Big Sox fan. That's terrible thing but <laughs> I mean um, also like I said uh, to trustee war as uh, you know you're asking about the O'Sullivan there's a few pages about a, a bunch of different things in here I just put it out there as a matter of fact and to answer uh, the question that I believe trustee Pierce said about the triad group yeah the triad group did uh, make a campaign donation to the better government for also uh, led by mayor Ryan um, and the same three people on the top of that organizational chart are the same top three people in the organizational chart for safe speed. So there may be a conflict right there. Not sure. I'm just putting it out there. Like I said, this is just for informational purposes only. 
spent a lot of time uh, doing some research and, and gathering stuff to present to all the trustees here so we're a little bit better informed. I have a question for Kent. Um, I hate I hate these red light and speed cameras. Uh, not for the you know not for catching violators. I I I think that uh, you know you should get points on your license for these types of things. But I hate the fact that villages and cities balance their budgets on, on the backs of these hundred dollar tickets. If we do go forward with new projects, how can can we and how and and if so you know. Well, can we earmark them for specific, instead of putting them into general funds and things, can we earmark them for like things like last week, you know, the mayor mentioned the fact that we're short, we can't get an ATV because we don't have the money for it. Can they be earmarked for things like public safety, you know, vehicles and, and safety equipment for the police officers? Actually, I had investigated this while I was still chief of police. And when I made the original proposal for the red light system, it was exactly that. The, the revenues would go in for law enforcement, public safety purposes. An untouched bucket, sir, right? Exactly. Okay. And uh, the then finance director and uh, chose not to. I, and that was before Kent. Yeah, and, and I have to say uh, that's probably a thing with finance directors. Um, you know, this, this really needs to be a discussion about the safety and about making sure that these intersections are safe. Um, but um, one of the ways you get people to change behavior is you penalize them for not doing the behavior that you're looking for. Um, one of the ways to do that is to have a fine. Um, so if the residual is that there is a fine or the residual for anything is that money is coming in, um, I would strongly urge not just in this case but in pretty much any case that you don't not tie your hands as a board on where monies go. You already have a, a business isn't operated like this. All of these different funds, um, you know, we, we have to have different buckets as it were for MFT and then there, there has a different set of rules than road and bridge. Um, the general fund has less restrictions than those. Um, the more you're tying your hands with revenues as to what they can be used for, um, the m much more difficult you're making it to manage. And frankly, um, that those things, and these are governmental funds, um, GASB uh, 54 has different levels of restrictions, five different levels of restrictions on uh, general fund monies. Um, from uh, fully restricted all the way down to assigned and then unassigned. Uh, the more you're putting restrictions on that, the more it wraps up into your audit, which <coughs> I spend a lot of time every year with S&P and Moody's, and they look at that. They absolutely look at it. So the more you're tying up your money, um, no matter what the issue is, and I'm not talking about red speed fines, I'm talking about anything. The more you tie up your money, uh, the more you're hurting yourself, both in terms of management, but also in terms of your credit rating. Well, not to speak for Trustee Delzell, but I believe the spirit of that was be, uh, instead of going into a general fund and being paid for wages or pensions, Chief Miller might actually have a few new cars this year if that were the case. I got it, but then you're not spending those monies uh, elsewhere. You're tying up monies, and, and that comes back to bite you. So when the referendum was passed last year in the state of Illinois for road and bridge, are you saying that that also hurt the credit rating of the state? It would have hurt it, but ironically, the village of Alsip had actually set up road and bridge long before, which pretty much exactly fit that state statute. Um, so... In our particular case, it didn't hurt us. Every other municipality, yeah, that's another notch against. But we were already there. Um, the Road and Bridge Fund is essentially that. We take monies uh, from the, the vehicle sticker, um, from our own uh, gas tax, um, from the Road and Bridge levy of the village, from the Road and Bridge levy from the township. We put all of those monies together, and that's how we manage Road and Bridge. That's essentially what the state statute was doing. As a matter of fact, if they, they wanted to write that legislation, they could have seen what we did. So it didn't hurt us. But in general, yeah, that, those type of things really hurt us. 
they absolutely hurt us. Um, anytime you have restrictions on money, because yes, yeah, if you get two more squads, then you were going to get, that means you're not doing it elsewhere or you're not being able to apply it to the debt or whatever the other prioritizations are. So it's not, not just in uh, red light cameras I'm talking about that. I'm talking about that for anything. Uh, the fire chief has talked about the fact that he collects money in his department for certain things and thinks that that money should go um, and be tied up uh, for his vehicles. Well, these are handcuffs that you're, you're self-imposing, and they come back to bite. It did come back to bite us because we didn't get that vehicle for the police or for the fire chief this year. It, it came back to bite there, but you, you prioritize. You can make – if you handcuff yourself, you don't have the ability to prioritize when it comes budget. And if you – the less handcuffs there are on you, the more you can still make that decision. But you're you're not you're restricting yourself from making those decisions by handcuffing yourself. Part of the reason we have the credit rating that we have is that we're a home rule municipality. If every single thing were equal in a non home rule community, they wouldn't have anywhere near the credit rating we have. Why? Because we have flexibilities that they don't have in terms of use of monies and levies and everything else. We don't have to utilize it, but just having that ability, credit rating agencies look at. So I would always, uh, I'm going to be probably be like the finance directors you've had before. I haven't met them much, I'm barely, a few sentences to each of the last two. Um, and finance directors you'll have 30 years after me. Um, we're all going to probably give that same answer. Thank you. And with regards to the red light, uh, they, they talk in traffic engineering of three E's. So there's the engineering that goes into the roadway which is already there, the education that we as drivers get to get our driver's license and hopefully continue on with that, and then the last E is the enforcement. So this is a component portion of the enforcement, and as most rules uh, of enforcement, every time you have to dig into your pocket for something, you remember that. So this here is, and what we're talking about, is traffic safety. We're not talking about revenues for the village. We're not talking about embellishing or fattening a pocket of anything. We're talking about adding to the safety of the community. Police officers can't be there to enforce it. It's just very difficult mm -hmm. intersection to do as we have a bunch of them like that. And they have other duties and obligations. So this is technology that we can use as a force multiplier to make the community safer, enforce those laws that are out there, and and are there truly for the benefit of the public. Uh, I know it. No one likes to get in it with those tickets. No one likes paying the $100. It's a revenue stream, though, Rick. No matter how you look at it, it's a revenue stream. No. I, I disagree. I disagree. Thank you, Trustee Zielinski, for the packets. Thank you. So you please update us after you talk to them. I will. I'll keep you informed after tomorrow. Ain't anybody else questions? Like okay. I said, the 800-pound gorilla in the room. Yeah, I know. I know. You really ate up the <laughs> clock in that one too. You know, I, I've just have, I'm gonna. My words are gonna come back to bite me if I don't say one quick thing. Hey, wait. <laughs> you said one quick thing. That's funny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um. Tying up your, we have a lot of debt out there, and at some point I am going to ask you to tie up monies for uh, the debt. Um, that's what Moody's and SMP are working for. It's not for additional expenses and expenditures. So just I, I want to put that little <laughs> asterisk out there. You just said we couldn't do it. I was just going to say you were just telling us how to untie. <laughs> they're looking for. We have a, we have a large amount of retiree debt. They they would like to see some sort of indication we're going to pay that off. We're, we're under traffic safety. I got it. I just knew my words. I, I said something. I missed finance, didn't he? Yeah. I just wanted to get another paragraph in. Right. Any, uh, any presentations, <laughs> petitions, or communications? No. Any unfinished business? Mayor, on, a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned um, sending termination letters to insurance. I, can you provide those letters to us to take a look at? What was that? You provided 90-day termination letters to a couple of insurance companies. I have it in my notes. I don't remember what that was about, but I don't remember seeing anything in the board packet to that effect. 
uh, those are those are something that um, those are 90-day notices that we send to the uh, actually we're gonna, we need an insurance committee meeting to follow up with this yeah, that, uh, so we need to schedule to a, follow up with what I want I want to I think it's in the best interest of the village especially with the with the budget constraints that we have to get some competitive numbers for our brokership we're not changing insurance you know providers I mean, just the carrier who's who's bringing us the insurance the broker and I want to shop that the cost of that insurance to know that we're getting a good competitive price on that so what you have to do is you have to give 90 day notice for Illinois public risk fund you know which is our workman's comp insurance but we found out Kent and I I'm just kind of confirming this too it's not expired is um we that's good and that it's not it's January May. first like it's no first it's we, a we May first it's a May first yeah, and they we got took, a 90 we day took an extension on that right that's but what I that's what I saw that's why I was requesting it I did the date dates did not make sense to me so right originally I we were on originally we were on a calendar year we switched that to a fiscal year okay. but did a letter go out because the board didn't know about that about that's you know, notifying somebody of a 90-day termination? When they're not, oh, I mean, did you actually send a letter? I did not send a letter. I did. Right. But it's not up. No, I, we confirmed the date after. It's supposed to be, but we made an exception with this one to try and, what was the reason for that again, Tim? What, what was happening is we were on a calendar year. We had the option of moving on that to a fiscal year um, and making it more than a one-year period. We did that because... Our workers' comp bill rates had gone up so dramatically like two years ago um, that we had made some very uh, – all the departments, um, including with HR and myself, helping that process along, um, tried to reduce how many people are being injured um, from any way we could. And uh, we moved from a loss control meetings to um, the accident, accident review, review board. board. And that was one of the ways, but the, the departments also helped in other ways. Um, we've had a dramatic decrease in uh, accidents, and it takes a while for that to move through the system. There's a lag, um, just because in one year you don't you see a less of a, uh, in, you know a decrease or even a less of an increase. You, that's not going to be reflected immediately in rates. So it was thought mm -hmm. that given the option to extend a year a little bit further, um, that was something we wanted to take advantage of because we felt that it was more likely we could that better the evaluate it. we've been I'm seeing would be reflected in rates. Mm -hmm. We could see our improvements and better evaluate it. That's why it was pushed uh, back. It, whereas it used to be on an annual basis, it's now moved to a fiscal year basis. That's in opposition the exact opposition of the um, the health care rates, which used to be on a fiscal year basis, but as soon as we started offering high deductible health care plans, that's based on federal law and with HSAs, and we needed to move from a fiscal year um, to a calendar year, which is uh, more difficult for me of budgeting, um, but uh, it allows for more uh, health care options, frankly, uh, to give um, which o is designed to overall decrease the cost. So one, we moved, <laughs> in most things I like moving to fiscal years, but one, we've had to move to a calendar year, and the other, we had an opportunity to move to a fiscal year, as well as capture some of the progress we've made in reducing uh, worker injuries. That's why it was moved to May 1st. Right. So the letters that went out are, don't mean anything then? Or Not right now, no. But we, we are compelled to give a 90-day notice when we want to shop that insurance. So right, employees but, aren't in any jeopardy of changing anything. All we want to do is shop the brokerages themselves to make sure we're getting good service and obviously at, at, a, at a competitive price. So we plan to do that in March? Whatever it takes, right. And we're, what about the uh, health care insurance? So when is that up for renewal? That's an annual basis. Right. That is January 1. And are we compelled on a 90-day notice on them as well? I don't know the answer. To we'll check on that tomorrow then. All right. I want to make sure all these notices go on, town, uh, on time, rather. I want to be competitive with the cost that we're spending for these right. services. But could I ask um, consideration um, that the board should know that we're doing that because you can't go out to bid unless the board agrees to go out to bid, and then we need three bids. What? But we didn't know we were terminating that one. No, no. It, when you use the word terminate is when you say that 
I may be terminus, but that may letter, be appa apparently our broker went to you with the letter. No, which, the broker well, you didn't come then? to me. I don't have the letter. How'd you, how'd you get the letter? I, I, I don't know, sir, but I don't know what the finger well, point was Obviously the for broker it. reached out to you. Just, well, why didn't you reach out to us? Because that's why I just you made issue. a decision. We're going to call a committee but you meeting. already have. As, as already a village administrator, I can look at things. You can't do like that this. on your own, Mayor. You can't. The decision won't be made on my own. The decision is made with the insurance committee, which is why the insurance we're have committee right. should have been notified if you were going to send somebody a 90 day notice letter. Well, there's no. Uh, we certainly wouldn't sit there and just say, listen, raise my rate because I'm going to pay you anyway. That doesn't make any sense. This is why we go out and we get competitive. We do it as a board, not as a single person. Well, I'm, obviously, when we go to shop, we will be doing it as a board, and it will be presented as a board, as a committee first. The committee makes the recommendation. Any new business? Um, I have one item, Mayor. Uh, I apologize I missed this under the fire department, but I would like it on the agenda for next week. Um, the fire department received a life safety award for their pu public education programs. Okay. So I'd like to as a, have that recognition put on the agenda. That's all I have. Okay. I was going to call for an executive session. We ran late, late today, and um, I will take this up at the next meeting. So I'd like to have a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mike. Any opposed? Very good. Thank you for joining us this evening, folks.